Hello, I'm Stephen. Hi, I'm Ross. Hey, I'm Con. And we are Raglans on IndieBuddy.com. Um, definitely, yeah. Living and experiencing things that aren't primarily in the back of a van with Ross and Con <laughs> can inspire you to like see the world differently and gone to Spain for me and living an entirely different life than the one I'd been living uh, the previous years was great for me. It really made me write songs in a completely different uh, mindset about completely different topics. And I think hopefully you'll hear that in the new album. What you guys? Um, yeah, just kind of more like of a fresher perspective, I suppose. Just coming back to it, um, writing seems easier. We're just kind of like, our workflow is just like, it's crazy. Like there's just a lot of songs coming out and stuff, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. We, well, we spend a large part of our life, like Steve said, in the back of a van and touring nonstop. So it was kind of strange to figure out what to do. <laughs> yeah. Well, I saw um, you, Con, you were just on your bike. All yeah, over, all I got, over. you know, got a, Cycling around the world. Yeah, if I'm not slumming it with you guys, I gotta slum it some other way. So. Fact. Stay moving. Yeah. Facts. Yeah. Well, I don't think we made it a conscious decision to. It kind of all. I don't know. There was just like different things happened. And just life got in the way, yeah, I suppose, like, and then just natural kind of. I think what's been important for us is that we never started with the mindset of like getting to a certain destination like play Wembley or do this. We didn't have any expectations when we started. So there was no reason to go, okay, we need to stop because we didn't reach this or get there. We just wanted to live our life and be happy. And that's what we're still doing now because this is what makes us happy uh, as far as I see it. Anyway. Well, actually, I was, I'd already moved over to Spain and then me, Ross and Con, we got a little cottage down in Kerry, in the Stoll. And uh, I flew back from Spain and we spent uh, maybe 10 days down there living in the wilderness. And One More Drop is one of the songs that uh, we produced in that 10 day period. And I think it kind of represents where we were at the time. Ross had just recently become the guitar player of the band. And we kind of consolidated as a three piece. And I think One More Drop is like kind of the entry level to the second part of Raglan's, do you know what I mean? It's the first song that began the new era, and uh, so it's kind of only right for that one to be the first one that people heard. But it uh, goes up from here, though, you know? <laughs> uh, I don't know, it's just like what we wanted, it's just what came out, what we wanted to write at the time. I think we were just in like one of those fast moods, I yeah. suppose, just like a guitar song. And I think we as well, really like it. a lot more, Con, you had a lot more input into how we like put the tracks together. Yeah. Uh, this time and like there's a sparsity in times in the verses uh, that Calm was instrumental in you know saying don't play the acoustic guitar all the way through the verses Stephen you know what I mean which I like to do <laughs> so like that it was through these conversations and sitting with each other and finding and it really I, I really like where it's taken us you know as uh, co-creators of Raglan music you know all the songs like came together really fast as well you know mm. like we didn't there was, we haven't labored over anything it, the way it works is like Steve or Ross come with a song, we like play it a few times. If it feels good, then we just demo it and get it to where we like it. Kind of a, so much more urgency with everything. Yeah, yeah exactly. we, we realized what we were laboring over was yeah. the fourth member, so we just got him out and straight to work. You know. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I I because like as like one of the songwriters of the band, like I saw that as like a you know a gratification thing you know what I mean it's like it's like I don't like awards but it, it shows you that your work is being recognized and in a sense your worth has a worthwhile nature to it um, so being away from the band for two years knowing that like your song was nominated to be one of the best songs in the country at that time yeah like it, it, it encourages you to go back and show people more of the music you're making and hopefully win it the next time just just to say you did you know <laughs> Their, their, their story is pretty interesting of how they started. Yeah, well, I suppose, not. I don't come from a musical background, really. Like, um, I started playing drums when I was kind of, when I met Ross as like a teenager in school, and we just started a band together, a very different band. Yeah, um, we were crap. Yeah, but we just <laughs> kind of, yeah, like, I, yeah, not I think it's, it's a little bit more romantic than that, though. You got your instruments at yeah, the same yeah. Christmas, you know what I mean? And yeah, learn together, yeah. like, that's why they're so tight, you know? Yeah. So and I'm able to just yeah. slip in between of their tightness, <laughs> you know? Yeah, it wasn't necessarily, like, a musical family yeah. or anything that either of us came from. It was just, like, 
your brother played guitar. Yeah. He was a bit older than us. It was kind of like, whoa, that's cool. And then it was just like, I'll play the bass. Mm. You play the drums, that kind of thing. Just natural. Yeah, like I've, I've always liked bands. You yeah. know, like the, the idea of bands is just always appealed to me more so than other kind of... And I think that's why it kind of works, because I'm from a background of like that old Irish session family who everyone wants to sing and everybody wants to write. And uh, the lads are into like, you know, band music. And I think that idea of the sing-along nature of what I do with the kind of big built, understood technicality of what the guys do, it, it shows a nice marriage of styles. Mm. You no, know, my mum told me before I put the crows out of business. Um, so I took that as a, an incentive to get better. But no, I just always <laughs> like playing at, at parties and on the beach when we were growing up, we'd go out at the weekend and we'd play and you'd learn new songs for each week. Uh, and that just grew out of that. And then I got bored of playing other people's songs. So I wanted to write my own songs that people would sing at parties and on the beach. And now that's what we do. <laughs> um, I think One More Drop is a good like starting point as in it's kind of just follow up with that, I suppose. But like, you know, well, I think when you release a song, it kind of the song becomes you're kind of just like, OK, next, you know, and then the next song becomes your favorite song. So, so every song we write and record, it's just like, that's going to be the one. And now it's just shaping up to be like an album of bangers, basically. Like. Yeah, we kind of treat it song for song. We don't try to build a, a style or a genre album. Mm. It's like, we like this song, let's do it the Raglan's way. We like this song, let's do it the Raglan's way until we've got enough to <laughs> put an album out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. We like to say yes when people ask us to play gigs. It's kind of been our uh, modus operandi, so that won't change. Yeah, definitely a lot, a lot of tours. Sweaty. Uh, smiley, um, <laughs> boisterous, feverish, yeah. shouty. It's it's like a, a different a different version of the songs almost. You know. It's, yeah. You know. It's uh, yeah. People like a lot. Of, we had a lot of people, especially when the album came out, and they came to see us play live, and they were just, "What is this?" In a yeah, good way. Yeah. But that's it, part it's of totally the, different. It's mm. part of the battle. You try to find like in the studio, capture the thing you do live, and then. Sometimes you can't do that, but that I think in the modern age, because touring live is so important, that is almost nice nicety to having a recorded version and seeing it with so much more attitude and aggression vibe than maybe it had on the recording. And I think that that's kind of yeah what we do. It's a little more uh, unfiltered live. Yeah, we're not trying to be so rigid on stage. You know, it doesn't <laughs> yeah. it doesn't matter if we like hit a bum note here and there. It's just like. In, enjoy it. That's the, yeah. I mean. That's the beauty of the whole live aspect. Yeah. Of yeah, you get lost in that hour. Yeah. yeah. It's, good. it's that exact. It's that exact um, thing that's kept us going. People spreading the word around, seeing us live from the very first time we played a gig. The next gig we played was like triple the amount of people, and we didn't have a label. We didn't have any money going into it. It's just been word of mouth. So tell your friend thank you and to keep it going. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think it was overwhelming because we, we were always ready to play gigs in front of people. That's kind of why we do it. It was overwhelming in the sense that our guitar player quit the band three weeks before the tour. So like it was like, oh, God, I've got to find a new guitar player in three weeks. <laughs> so that was uh, almost overwhelming, but we, we did it, and the tour was a roaring success. And it then afforded us the opportunity to go back to all of these cities and play our own shows after. So no, it was, it was perfect. It was I think great. once you get bitten by the touring bug as well, you just can't yeah. stop. Maybe that's well, some people, if they get bitten by it, they get sick and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and they can never do it again. It usually goes like, one or the other way. Yeah. You either can't get enough of it or you instantly yeah, you just, have enough of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so. No. God, uh, we're not the right people. Yeah, we're not the right people. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy yourself is paramount. Yeah. And if you do that, then you don't feel like you're working. But if you don't feel like you're working, you might not be successful. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a catch-22, I guess. Depends on what kind of band it is, I suppose. Mm. Like if you're a big like robotronic electronic band, you know what I mean? Like playing like <laughs> dance music and stuff. Yeah. It's kind of, maybe it's cool to be uniform on stage and stuff. But if you're like a rock band, why would you just stand there? You know, on your side of the stage, that's a bit like I don't know. I think boring. It, yeah, like Ross said, it depends on the band. And if you're at a band and it feels authentic, what they're doing, mm. it doesn't matter if they're dancing and doing cartwheels. If it feels like what they're doing is real to them and they're not like being disingenuous and trying to manipulate the viewer then it's cool so like I don't personally like practice what I'm going to say on stage because I, that doesn't work for me but when I see somebody who's got a well rehearsed bit that like gets the crowd whipped into a frenzy I'm, I'm, I'm impressed 
I'm gonna go rehearse now. Yeah, yeah. Rehearse. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. We're just we're just um, we're kind of just recording now, just kind of writing, recording, demoing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, do a few shows, secret shows at the end of um, March, and then probably just announce. Yeah, so we're going to do one in Dublin so you get to see us. Um, and then, yeah, we're going to put out as much music this year as we can, singles as much as possible before this album comes out. So keep an eye on our Facebook, our Spotify, our YouTube. We're going to be prolific. Thank you. <laughs>